Hey everyone, welcome to SG STEM 19. And uh, we have changed it to a month now, so it's nice to see some faces after a month, some faces in a few minutes from leaving after work. So hi, colleagues. Uh, so this week we are having one of my colleagues, Dr. Venisri from ACUS. She is the wildlife vet at the center and she helps treat all of the sick, injured, and often what often, often wildlife, often. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna find out what happens inside the treatment room of uh, Acres, and hopefully we can see some cute stuff as well. As Marcus mentioned before, we do have the uh, trivia pod, and these are the links where you can send your answers to later and the trivia sheet as well. I think Marcus has shared them in the chat. So yeah, so sit back and enjoy. Uh, back to you. All right, I shall be sharing the screen. So, um, also if you've got any questions, oh, please also, drop, drop them in the trivia chat and um, turn on your speakers, sit back and enjoy. When I was really young, I actually wanted like a one-stop pet center. <laughs> as cliche as it sounds, it's a clinic and then you can also do grooming and people can get um, food for their like dogs and cats, like a pet shop. But then as um, when I was in vet school and I you know, learned more and I was exposed more to things and I started um, interning in a lot of places, I actually decided then when I was in my third year that I actually only want to work with wildlife. They need help and there's not a lot of people out there who would um, get into this industry. It's not a money-making industry. Conservationists, environmentalists, wildlife vets, we work on the ground, we don't earn much, but it's so much more meaningful than working at a clinic. So that's why I chose this path. Hi, I'm Dr. Benishri. I work at Acres. I've been here for four years now and I work with wildlife, only wildlife. Most of the wildlife that we deal with are um, injured or uh, sick or orphans. So because we live in such an urban environment, um, most of the causes are human related. They could have either concussed into a building or they could have been ran over or they could have been trapped somewhere or have strings attached to their leg. So the trauma is usually induced by um, humans. Uh, not intentionally most of the time, but um, it is uh, sort of like a side effect of human behavior. Yeah. So um, my day starts pretty early and it starts with prepping food for the baby animals that we have. Um, baby animals meaning orphan wildlife. We have shrews over there, we have civets, we have squirrels. These are all um, wildlife that have been rescued and have been tried to, re to be reunited. And when the reunion fails, then we take them in, we rehabilitate them until they're ready for release. So because they're babies, they need frequent feeding. They need um, to be fed as early as 7.30 in the morning sometimes. Um, but because the ones that we have are a little bit more independent, they can eat on their own. So we start at nine. And, um, and then after prepping food and feeding the babies, it moves on to treating the injured animals that have already been uh, brought in yesterday or the day before or the week before. Yeah. So that goes on until about 11. And then the, the night rescue from the shift before uh, they will bring in new wildlife that they rescued last night. So then it'll be, it'll be me going through uh, the animals that were brought in, doing a physical assessment and um, finding out what's the diagnosis. And then, you know, if they are able to be treated, we will treat them and uh, prepare an enclosure for them and make sure they're comfortable. Um, I pretty much do everything else here. It's, a, it's basically cleaning, feeding ensuring that they are comfortable uh, cutting substrates for them because these are wild animals we want them to feel comfortable we want to make sure that they have a little bit of greens and you know they don't feel like they're in a completely foreign environment so everything is done um, properly here yeah. so this one crashed into a building which is one of the most common things we see here at acres but it's concussing um, it is singapore there's high-rise buildings everywhere and for migratory birds or even local birds they tend to 
can pass right into a window or a wall, um, which is really unfortunate. So this bird crashed into a window and has a coracoid fracture. So um, all he needs is just cage rest for two weeks and then he's good to take flight. He can fly now, but uh, relatively low flight, so it's not good enough for a raptor. So once he has recovered in two weeks, we will release him. He's got a really great appetite though, he eats a lot. We don't discriminate between species um, because for us, all of them are wild animals. We don't see one as a pest and one as a very special, interesting, unique case. Um, so yeah, we treat them all equally. Everybody gets the same um, attention and same treatment. Uh, basically, whatever they deserve, they get it. And if they unfortunately cannot be helped, regardless of species, if it's uh, an injury that is too extensive, if it's something that cannot be treated, if it's something very infectious, then unfortunately they will be euthanized. But that's always the last resort and um, we will do a full assessment and we will of course weigh all the options before we make such a decision. We rescue all pigeons, so regardless of species, whether it's a white-bellied sea eagle or a pigeon or a pigeon who's really sick or a pigeon who looks relatively healthy, a young baby pigeon or an adult pigeon, we rescue them all. So yeah, so yes, Acres does treat pigeons. People always think we don't. If you go to Facebook, you will see some people who go, Acres doesn't treat pigeons, you know, but no, we do. Most of the reptiles that we get, the, the ones from the illegal wildlife trade, were all previously kept as pets. Uh, we rescue native wildlife, native reptiles as well, pythons and monitor lizards and um, turtles and stuff. But we also get a high volume of um, animals that were confiscated or surrendered. They were illegally kept. And when those guys come in, they usually come in with health problems. Um, it's because people kept them indoors. For reptiles, their, their needs are so specific. You need to ensure they get UV light. You need to ensure the humidity is right. Otherwise, they get respiratory issues. They get uh, shell problems. They get shell rot. They get uh, liver disorder from the in a, from wrong diet. Sometimes for a vegetarian tortoise that only is herbivorous, only eats greens. Sometimes people give meat or some a completely wrong diet. So they all come in with problems and. Um, when they come in like that, the treatment is really long, rehabilitation is really long. Um, Acres is the home for a lot of, about close to 200 animals that are permanently here. These are all animals from the illegal wildlife trade. But we do try and repatriate some of them. So we have a good relationship with the Malaysian wildlife government. Uh, we have a good relationship, good relationship with the Indian wildlife department as well. So we send back 51 star tortoises three years ago. Uh, we regularly send back turtles back to Malaysia as well, leopard cats back to Malaysia as well. So when people smuggle in, it's so easy. They literally put it in a suitcase and they cross the border, right? Or they fly over. But to send an animal back into the wall, back to where they belong, with CITES permits and license and getting approvals and arranging for logistics, it's a whole long process. When wild animals fall sick or get injured, um, here in Singapore, people notice them and they, there's an organization that actually goes out and helps them uh, compared to when, you know, in a jungle and if they fall sick or they get injured, they just die, right? So to be given an opportunity to actually help these animals and treat them and then to be able to give them a second chance at life again is something I've always wanted to do and it's a very satisfying job. I feel very grateful when I get to help these animals and to have them fly away or to whatever they do when they get released um, is very heartwarming. You know that, you know, at least they get to live in the wild again instead of um, being kept in cages or instead of just dying a slow, painful death in the jungle. Yeah. We do live in a uh, sit in a jungle country so there will be wildlife all around so one way one one of the most important way of being able to help is to be aware of what to do and what not to do when you encounter wildlife um, and anytime you find a baby animal don't bring it home um, the parents will be around so we will always push for a reunion and um, if you see a sick or injured animal call acres we'll um, try and help the animal and if they do want to get 
physically involved, they want to uh, volunteer with us. We do take in volunteers. Um, we take in volunteers for the animal care work at the center itself. Uh, so they help out with husbandry, so cleaning, feeding, preparing food, um, making enrichment for the animals. Um, if they do want to get involved with rescue, then it's 21 and above. They can sign up to become rescue volunteers. And if they want to be involved in outreach, to go out and tell people about wildlife and about um, living a conscious lifestyle to help animals in whatever means they can, then they can join the outreach volunteer program where they will be uh, working with the education team to go out and educate people, spread awareness. <laughs> oh, excellent. Uh, right, so we had to do a video before you guys wonder, oh wait, why are we not following her around? Uh, the treatment room has got lights uh, that are on timer. Obviously the lights are on timer. And you have animals which are sensitive to light and sound. So obviously at resting animals, they need to rest at night, which is why we decided to film it earlier because if we just decide to do a live session, there wouldn't be much animals to see except for the nocturnal ones. This is why we, Marcus, Audrey and I went down sometime two weeks ago. And then we just follow Dr. V around and yeah. So yeah, so you guys can start dropping your questions in the chat and uh, we'll look through them. You guys, Have you found any questions here, Marcus? Anything to ask about the video or just generally about um, the work here or about wildlife or wildlife medicine, anything, shoot. I actually have one because we saw the so very charismatic uh, sparrow hawk, the mouth, mouth and eyes wide open. Um, well, we were talking about, about uh, him or her just now, and I was one, one thing to find out more about how, how, is, how is he or she doing? Oh, um, it actually got released um, a week ago. Yeah. So it was really nice um, release. She basically just jumped out of the carrier and flew off very nice light there so nice. So that's um a very interesting thing about um window collision it can either cause um it can either you know the animals can die from it uh from a really hard uh, collision or sometimes they um get intracranial pressure build up in their head basically can you imagine if you knock your head really hard against something um, so there's swelling in the brain and that one can cause neurological damage. So those are also pretty um, bad cases. But occasionally, actually quite common, uh, we get birds that do come in with just a mild concussion uh, and after 24 hours of rest, they are ready to fly again. So those are pretty good. Sometimes we get birds that come in with a coracoid fracture. So um, that's the bone over around here. And so that one, they just need cage rest for about two weeks. And after two weeks, they are good to go. They fly like nothing ever happened to them. Yeah. Anything else? Mm. Okay, we got a question about minimum volunteer age, but Anbu's answering in the chat. So for people who are not following the chat, for sanctuary volunteering, it's 18. And if you want to do wildlife rescue, it's 21 years old and you'll have to go through training and stuff for those as well. And you can also put the, the link as well if, the, if you want to know where to sign up. You can do that as well. So that is the ACUS um, website. Um, under support us, you can find um, how to be a volunteer or you can donate there to ACUS, raise funds or be a wildlife supporter. It's quite fun volunteering. Yep. I started off as a volunteer. That's how I got to know about Acres when I was a vet student. I've got a sister here in Singapore, so she told me, oh, you know, you're, you're so into wildlife. Why don't you try 
this wildlife volunteering program uh, by this organization called Acres the Green Laos, and to help build a sanctuary for the bears over there. So that's how I started. So it'd be good you guys can join as a volunteer. It could take your places. You never know. I do some uh, rescue volunteering as well on the side when I am uh, tired of my desk job. So yeah, it's like it's what I do at night, right? I run around, save animals, because that's what heroes do. No, of course, I'm, I'm really, sometimes I get tired of the desk job and I'm like, oh, I need to see some animals today. So yeah, so it's really fun. And then uh, I've learned a lot on the job. So yeah. We've got one question from Liz. Kana, do you want to read it? Yeah, sure. Let's see, it's loading, it's very... How long have you been treating wildlife and do you try, Do you cry when any animals do not make it? I know I would, says Liz. The, yeah, I've been um, working here at Acres for four years. So right after graduation, I've been here. So that's four years of working with wildlife. Um, and euthanasia or having an animal die is not easy but um when you understand the need for it to be done or when you understand that these animals by the time they come in they're already in a pretty bad state already so um it could have been way longer than uh what we think it is like of them being stranded so when they do come in and they don't make it at least um we know that we've, we've tried so uh it's sad but i you know i don't cry <laughs> i don't cry you know because i i understand why it happens and why if it's euthanasia why it needs to be done so there's a full understanding of the, the whole idea behind it but um there were occurrences of um a certain species or not species i wouldn't say species certain individual a particular animal that you know somehow um, has been a long-term patient and when they don't make it it's pretty heartbreaking because you put in so much effort and you do your best to get them to recover and then when they don't make it after a long time they pass that's uh that's very very sad yeah awesome thank you this question always asked as well like do, does it affect you and stuff what's our side Will I be able to do this? So I guess it's part of the job, right? Yeah. Uh, let's see, more questions. Priya wants to know, what is the most interesting animal you've treated and what are the challenges you faced in treating the animal? Mm. Oh, I would, I would um, very openly say that it's the Kalugo, Malayan Kalugo. Um, there, there's not much uh, info or data on them, like in terms of what um, drugs to use on them, you know, because they are flying lemurs and there's a lot of data on lemurs in general, but not on flugos. So, um, and these guys, uh, they get really, really stressed. They don't eat in captivity. So even if you want, if they come in for an injury and you know that they need to stay for a while, but you know that if you keep them in captivity, they're just going to die anyway because they get so stressed. They bash around. They don't eat. They 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 basically starve themselves to death. So it, it's very difficult working with Kalugos because it's either a let's do what we can and just release them and you know see if they can fend for themselves or if it's uh, an injury that's not going to help them survive in a while or in captivity, then they have to be euthanized. Um, so yeah, Kalugos are pretty challenging, I would say. Also, because when they scream, it sounds like a dinosaur. Really. I've not heard that before. I've not heard that yeah. scream before. I, I figured they would probably scream like lemurs, like a haunting, scary thing. So yeah, yeah no one who I'm just interested in animals. In, yeah, I was just calling me out in the chat like that. Like, wow, I don't, don't need to sit here and take this. Uh, next question is from, I lost it, Sinway. Sinway wants to know, do you learn on the job as you deal with a variety of animals? Uh, with a variety of anatomies and physiologies like reptiles today, mammals tomorrow? Um, so I, they don't teach you about wildlife medicine in school. 
it's a, it's a it, it touch and go basically it's very little very minimal so you learn through internships and volunteering at wildlife rescue centers and um, watching uh, webinars and reading up on things so that's how I learned um, uh, but yeah you learn on the go definitely anytime rescue texts me and tell me tells me that when they you know, they quickly inform me that there's this case coming in, you know, um, I very quickly read up on something that if, if I don't know, I will make sure that I do my research before I deal with the patient so that I am fully equipped. Yeah. But after four years of being here, um, I can pretty confidently say that we have rescued quite a wide range of species. So I'm fairly familiar with most of them, yeah. All right. Is there anything that you've not treated and you really want to, this is a question from me, as a follow-up. Can we focus on the questions on, on the chat first? Oh, There's okay, so many... fine, right, okay, guys. You see that, guys, you can't ask questions off the chat, right? Cool. <laughs> right, uh, we have a question from uh, iPad. Uh, is this your first job after graduating? You see a myriad of animals with many conditions. Do you have a team or any other vet you can consult with? Yeah, so um, for almost three and a half years, I worked alone. Uh, very recently, we hired a, 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 help, like a, a vet nurse. So there's been help, which has been pretty great. But yes, I do have um, a lot of vet friends in the industry, in the wildlife industry, um, that I do consult every time I am faced with a case that I'm not fam familiar with, or if the diagnostics, uh, you know, diagnosing the, the disease or the injuries is a bit hard, then I do uh, consult other uh, vet friends. So, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, that was good. I think that is all the questions now. Uh, I think uh, Dr. V will be sticking around for a bit more. So you guys can continue putting your questions in the chat as we move on to the next segment, which is the trivia. But first, I want to say thanks, Dr. V, for letting us run around your treatment room, uh, stress you and the animals out to shoot the video, and for being here today. As a master, Joanne asked if volunteers need to work at Acres or is there a way to help offside? As Acres is quite far away from me, from her, but she wants to help. So, yeah. um, so I, think, I think Anbu answered her. So she was saying if you click on the link, you can check out the VIA programs, which oh, has yeah. all the other needs of the organization. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and she also, she also said that there are certain fundraising projects for use uh, and sharing via social media, so that could help. So yeah, contact Acres for that for sure. Uh, yeah, so definitely thanks to Dr. V who allowed us to follow follow her around while she was doing uh, everything on her day. Um, during our uh, conversation, we also learned that um, uh, like certain machines uh, would, be, would be extremely helpful for, for her work in diagnosing animals such as a blood, blood machine. So if you can contribute, that might be great. Uh, yeah, so we're going to move on. You guys want to spare blood machine laying around? Yeah. <laughs> Get us up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or send some love uh, your, your way to Acres. So we're going to move on to um, the trivia. Um, so we'll let yep. Kaman share the screen and we'll go into trivia mode. So don't go away, although this is the end of the, the first part, the talk. Uh, we're going to play trivia. So like I mentioned, um, if you're interested to play trivia, please uh, head over to the link I just posted, tinyurl.com sg stem, stem dash uh, trivia. Uh, and update the live trivia sheet with your team name and we'll be good to play as soon as I give our briefing. So um, today's uh, theme uh, is VET, very obvious, uh, and then there'll be a bonus round. So three rounds and a bonus round. Uh, update your team name on the trivia sheet and your preferred beneficiary should you win. Um, the trivia pot will go to that beneficiary. And I learned today that there was at least how much is, is there in a trivia pot? I've not checked yet, you know. Okay, I think uh, this is, yeah. there might be a $25 transfer. At least one person don't, uh, contributed 25 so that could be it. I'm not sure. Big acres, big acres. <laughs> yes, so um, 
uh, drop your name beneficiary in the trivia sheet. And how we're going to play is that we're going to ask the questions on, on the screen and uh, you will answer them. You could write your, write your answer down or you could type it out somewhere. I know Sinwe uses an Excel sheet. Um, and then um, after the three rounds, uh, we would go through the answers together. Uh, it's an honor code. You're not supposed to check the internet. You're not supposed to check books, but you can check your, with your teammates. Um, you mark your own answers yourselves. And then we will play a bonus round, which I'll explain later. So at the end of the trivia, we'll declare the winner uh, based on what you update on the Google Sheet. And then um, you have to send us your, um, either take a photo of your answers that you've written down or send us your what you've typed out. And this is for, just for Mark's verification. And then we would make the transfer to the charity um, by the end of the week, start of the next week. So this is how we yep. play. So, um, and also you can form teams, try to form teams of no more than four people because sometimes people are very good at this. So, yeah, try to form teams of no more than four people and stuff like that. Or you guys can form two teams if there's a lot of you from the same group. Yep. So, so I yep. see like at least two or three teams um, looking, um, filling up names really. We'll, we'll give you guys like another minute to get your names on, get your teams on. Feel free to like chat up people in the chat uh, if you need a teammate or something. If someone particularly looks, uh, you cannot recruit Marcus, myself, or Dr. V. It's, it's not fair. I, already, I, no, I was going to join Amu and Danu, but I'm not allowed to. Yeah. <laughs> you're not. You gave questions. You gave questions. Oh, answer them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but there are questions in the chat group, the chat chat box, maybe. Uh, well, if you I'll stick to answering that. <laughs> yeah. So as the trivia sheet gets yep. filled up, Thanks. I'm looking at the SG STEM donations. And I think since the start last May, so it's, oh, yeah, it's almost happy birthday SG STEM. We started on 1st May. Um, we've got a total yeah. of $1,570 in donation to various charities in Singapore. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and and I think with the dollar matching, that's probably double, isn't it? Yes. Wow. Yeah. So over three thousand dollars raised. Thank everyone. Excellent. And I see this this week's um, there are at least four groups playing this week, and all the beneficiary uh, are acres. So no need to play. No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh... So yeah, oh guys, if the tiebreaker, it's a tiebreaker, we're gonna let the host or the guest speaker do the tiebreaker and you guys are for so much difficulty. Yep. You'll know why when you see the question on B for Vinny Street and like, questions were difficult. Okay, so I think um, most of the groups have finalized their names. Uh, we can start. Yeah, let's go. Uh, so for the first one, V, E, T, right? V, oh. Is for Venetry, our guest speaker for the day, and these three questions came from her. So if you have any issues, we can contest them later. So herons are independent from the moment of hatching. What is this attribute called? Herons are independent from the moment of hatching. What is this attribute called? A, precocial, B, cocial, C, altracial, and D, independent. It's just called independence, man, they're independent. <laughs> Oh, I also noticed one thing. Would like to say something. Uh, you don't type your answers in the live Google sheet. You write it down somewhere. So, uh, yeah. So you don't share your answers in the world. Then what? Hey, Ava. I think write it somewhere first. Ava, you need to mute yourself. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, man, you're unmuted. House rescue. It's nice that we've got two members of the team who joined. Mm -hmm. And I think they're on the road now as well, so yeah, that's fun. Road. Question two, where would you usually see interspecific conflict wounds in primates? Where would you usually see interspecific conflict wounds in primates? A, the genital anal region. B, the head and face region. C, limbs, or D, body, the torso region. Where would you usually see interspecific conflict wounds in 
primates? Um, there's actually been a mistake in the question. It's intraspecific. It's not inter. Right, intraspecific, right? Yeah. Because if it's interspecific. Yeah, I was reading it and I was like. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So this the question means basically within the same species. Um, so intraspecific, not inter. Inter meaning two different species. Yeah, there we so, go. so if you were to, is within the species. Yep. So if you were to fight with someone, where are you going to hurt them? Yeah, man. <laughs> if, if you're a primate, we I'm going to say the yeah. tail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Just pull the tail right here. Yeah. Name three causes of respiratory diseases in desert tortoises. Name three causes of respi respiratory, respiratory oh my God, diseases in desert tortoises. I think there's some clue in the video, right? If you can remember. Yes. Yeah, I, I think she did mention a couple of stuff. That wasn't about pigeons. <laughs> okay, moving so on. If, if you guys like, need me to... Like, if you guys get the flu, what, what causes the flu? Or, you know, if you have the sore throat or... Uh, runny nose, what, what usually causes it. So it's uh, not very different. Yeah. I know. Lots of clues drop in. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, red herrings. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, if you guys need me to go through any of the questions, just holler out in the chat and I'll go back to them, right? Moving on to the second part. E for Herb Day. was celebrated sometime last week. I think it was last Thursday. So yeah. Ever since the beginning, how many herb days have we celebrated? Ever since its beginning, how many herb days have we celebrated? Also, right, this is not just a random picture. Apparently, this was the unofficial flag that they came up with uh, when they decided to start this thing going. So, yeah. Okay, I think I figured out who S is in the thing because I just got asked respiratory. Getting called up here. All right, moving on. Over the past two decades, Google has celebrated her day with a doodle on their landing page. What was featured in last year's doodle? What was featured in last year's doodle? A, trees, B, chimpanzee, C, B. Why can't you put B, B, C, B, uh -huh. T, albatross? <laughs> this was Marcus' question. He just wanted me to say C, B. Yeah, so uh, Google Doodle is the, um, um, uh, an art or a video or something you interact with when you go into the, um, into the Google landing page. So I gave a feedback that the questions are moving too fast. Ooh. Are they? Okay, let's go back. No, no, I think like from now on, you can maybe go a bit slower. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, there we go. There's no time to discuss. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I, see, I see where it's happening. I see where it's <laughs> happening, yes. It's, it's on the wall. It's literally because... Uh, yeah, no googling. Yeah, no googling. Yeah. Doodling. Yeah. Yeah. On update this year, the USA organized the Leaders Climate Summit with over 40 world leaders who attended. Which country, Jang Jang Jang, was not invited? Which country was invited to this year's Leaders Climate Summit? Is Kanan frozen or Kanan might be frozen? You guys got the question, right? Say again. Nope. Okay, so I'll, I'll read you the question. You guys heard the question, right? Yeah, maybe Marcus, you read it. Kanan, yeah, I'll read it. So on Earth Day this year, this is question three. Um, the United States of America organized the Leaders Climate Summit, summit with over 40 world leaders who attended. Which country was not invited? 
A, Brazil, B, China, C, India, and D, Malaysia. Choose one. <clears throat> so I repeat, A is Brazil, B is China, C, India, D, Malaysia. All right, moving on. The last one is the 20th letter, which is T. Love apple is an archaic name for what fruit? Love apple is an archaic name for what fruit? A, the tart cherry. B, tamarind. C, tomato. And D, tangerine. The are T's. Hmm. I don't know an answer for this one. Okay. Hanan's question. So I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> but, um, yes. I was like, oh, B E T. What can be T? T. So, yeah. S N is a chemical symbol for which element? S N is a chemical symbol for which element? Uh -huh. Titanium. Tin, telecenium, unobtainium. Titanium, tin, telecenium, unobtainium. I wonder how they assign letters for elements. Some of them just don't make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think might be some of them might be based on like the Greek names. Yeah, I think some of them, like I think gold is based on like, the old name, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is probably from the Latin names. Yeah, that's what he says. Um, last question. Question three. Score is an old school term for what number? Score is an old school term for what number? 12, 24, 20, or 30? Score is an old school term for what number? Now you know how people say a dozen, that kind of thing. So old school terms. So score. Okay. Does the Acres team not need more time? All right. All right, so for those of you who have never played before, you know, refresher, we will go through the answers now, right? So don't send them to us yet. Hold on to them. We will mark the answers together and later you can send them to us, okay? This is your chance to, like, contest anything. So let's go. Pre kosher is the term for birds that are independent from the moment of hatching. Or is when they some help afterwards. I don't know what kosher is. Make that. term to it though. I mean, it's um, similar to pre kosher, but it's also called nidifugus. It's uh, more specific to birds as soon as they leave their nest, is what it means. You could spell it out in the chat for people as well, please. Thank you. It's, um, there's something really uh, cool about this, actually. Can I just add? Um, if you notice um, animals or birds that are precocial, go back. <laughs> um, are actually the ones that have nests on the ground. So you would think that because they have nests on the ground, um, their survival instinct is higher. So that's why as soon as they hatch or they, they are born, they need to be able to stand and to be able to run and um, be a little more independent. So like um, prey species, mostly your um, uh, deers and giraffes and zebras, as soon as they're born, they can run and walk, right? 
So it's the same with birds. The ones that lay um, eggs on the ground are the ones that are fecal cell, mostly. Uh, uh, that's pretty cool. I only know the term pre-question and ultra-shell thing I learned from Bird Park a long time ago. It's good to know it's a different term. And that you can use it for mammals. I always thought it was just like... That's... No, it can be... Question two, where would you... Where would you usually see inter, yeah, inter intraspecific wounds in primates? Uh, it's A, the genital anal region, which is also called the perianal region, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's where the, most of the wounds occur when primates fight with each other within the species. And question three, you can pick any of these things for cause of respiratory diseases in desert tortoises. Uh, you will have to pick all three to get the full mark. We will not give you bits and pieces. Vitamin A deficiency, herpes virus, uh, bacteria, my mycoplasma, environmental, foreign body and respiratory tract of fungal. This is one of the reasons why uh, illegal pets like tortoises do not do really well in Singapore because our humidity is so damn high and it's so damn hard for them to breathe. So any three of this should get a full score, right? Yeah, any three of these should get a full score. Well, obviously, if they kind of like describe it in a different way, we can look into it. Well, Sinway got pathogens, yeah. malnutrition, too much humidity. Yeah, vitamin A deficiency is a form of malnutrition. Yeah, so... Stacy, you get two marks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. All right, next one of day. Let's go. Uh, we've had 51 years of herb days, so we have 51 herb days. It was started in 1960 for the first time, and uh, 2021 is number 51. So yes, yeah, 51 days or 51 years, it's acceptable. And question two, the doodle was the C B was the doodle for 2020's Google update. No, the 2020 update doodle on Google. Yep. B is the answer. It featured a B and you could play a B game and you go around collecting pollen or nectar. That's, that was an interesting one. So Ying had a has has a joke. He's Herpes virus, herpes, and herps are a virus specific to hers. Herps. Oh, okay. Oh, it's not a joke. It's a question. Huh? Herpes virus. Being asked is if, if the herpes virus... Uh... There's a lot of herpes in there. <laughs> yeah, whoa. Yeah. So is I, I think what you must know is... Is herpes virus, herpes, and herps, or is it just... Oh, is it the actual herpes that we get found in, in herb tiles? Or is it a herb tile specific herpes virus? Yeah, it's a reptile specific one. So if, yeah. if you've got herpes, you won't be able to spread it to a, your pet. Not that you, you don't have pet here, pets in Singapore. But yeah, you won't be able to spread it to another reptile. Or they won't be able to spread it to you. So don't worry about it. We've had a, an ex staff who was um, pretty worried about these kind of things. So, yeah. Yep. So, um, this helps to uh, SG STEM 15, where we had a quiz that was only about herpes, three questions about herpes. Yes. And, um, well, one of the answers was that how many types of herpes virus there are? There are one in a hundred. Yeah, that's a lot. It's very species specific. Yeah. That's a good thing that most of them don't cross as well. Question three, on her day this year, oh the God. country that was not invited to the Leaders Climate Summit was Malaysia. That's Malaysia sad. was not invited to the, <laughs> to the Leaders Climate Summit, where 40 other countries were in attendance. Yeah, I think Marcus, there was, you know why uh, they were not invited? No idea. I think there was a question raised by one of the uh, parliamentarians as well. Uh, they, wrote a, okay. they wrote an opinion piece on the papers.
didn't explain why the USA did, didn't say why. Uh, all right, last one. Love Apple is an archaic name for the tomato. Love Apple is an archaic name for the tomato. And tin is the element that has the chemical symbol S and tin has the chemical symbol S and uh, I made up telecenium uh -huh. and unobtainium was the precious metal that was found in the movie Avatar. Yep, and tin, S N comes from the Latin name for tin, which is stenum. Oh, oh yeah, yes, it is Jordanus. Very good. Stenum. Thank you, Sinway. So tin is S N. The last one is 20. Score is an old school term for 20. So someone is, if someone is like score and four years old, they are 24 years old. 20 is score. This video also mislead people because there's 30 there. So I'm like, hey, hey. excellent. Over to you, Marcus. All right. So please tally up your your scores, which is actually a maximum of nine, um, and put it up in the chat box for the various rounds. So for example, you have seen Big Fish has uh, two points for round one, two points for round two, and three points for round three. Uh, and it totals up your scores for you. So please go ahead and uh, update that. And um, as you're updating that, I will talk briefly about the bonus round. So most of you uh, might be new to this. So I'm going to uh, try to be as clear as I can. So we're going to go into the bonus round. doesn't matter if you are ahead or behind. So if you're ahead, you, the bonus round aims to, to let you pull ahead even more. Uh, and if you're behind, the bonus round may just allow you to, to win. Right? So how does this work? As you tally up um, your points, um, you can the bonus, bonus round is about wagering them. So right? Um, you could write the number of points you want to wager based on the maximum number of points you have, and you game the number of points you wager if you are correct for the bonus question. Uh, so for example, if you've got um, six points, which is your total, and if you wager uh, six points, if you get the bonus questions correct, you get six plus six, which is 12 points. But then you also lose the number of points you wager if you're wrong. So if you've got six points and you wagered all six points, and if you're wrong, uh, you end up with zero points, right? So think carefully about how you want to play your, the bonus round. Uh, please fill up your wager uh, in the wager box. Also, you can only wager what you have. So you can be smart and be like, oh, I want to wager 100 points when you have like 10 points. We will yes. find you and we will blacklist you. No, I'm kidding. We'll let you play. We are nice like that. All right. So, um... so Three teams have filled up their wager, and we are waiting for two more teams, I think. I don't know if NR is playing or Team Walker, Smoker is playing, but we have at least four teams in play. I think um, it's NR and Team Walker playing still, or are, you, are they driving around for the rescue? No, nope, no one's shouting violently. Okay, I think we can do the yeah. bonus. I think I think Team Mocha might be Acres. I'm not sure what who, who NR is. Yeah. Because Mocha is one of the dogs we have there. Oh yes. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Team Mocha lost track of questions. Oh, okay. So sorry about that. So we we go ahead. Nine. All right. So uh the bonus round comes from the video itself. So I hope you guys are paying attention. How many types? AKA species of pigeons were featured in the video. How many types, AKA species of pigeons were featured in the video? Yep, so pigeons feature prominently in the video. And I remember Dr. V saying or clarifying that Acres uh, treats pigeons. Repeatedly, yes. <laughs> yes. Dr. V, what's your favorite kind of animal? Or are you not gonna answer the question for this in the chat? Uh, you can never have a favorite. Fair enough. Yeah, so you guys can go fill up the thing over there uh, in the Google Sheet. Just gonna... How's it going, Marcus? Shall we? Uh, yeah, they've all widget and so yeah, maybe we've 
a minute and a half has passed. So you just have to write down how many number species of pigeons were featured in the video. So yeah, I think we could reveal the answer. There were two species of pigeons in the video. We had the pink neck green pigeons, which were like going to town on the fruit. And we had the rock pigeons, which uh, Dr. V was applying some cream on. So yeah, two species of pigeons. All right, so if you've got uh, the answer two, um, and you've got it right, you add the number of points you wagered to your total points. And if you got it wrong, you subtract it. So let's see. Looks like we may have an unofficial winner right there. Who's, who's looking good? Um, it looks like Tim Big Fish. Big Was that? Fish. Yeah. So that's our unofficial winner. So we've got um, Tim Big Fish with 14 points, um, SSW, the RBL, 12 points. Uh, Joe gets zero points, unfortunately, uh, as does ILH. All right. You guys can send us photos or documents of your answers to sgstem.doctrivia.gmail.com. Uh, Marcus and I will look at them and then we'll make like an official answer release sometime over the weekend. Uh, yeah, so far, official and official has always been the same. And please update your scores at tinyurl.com slash sgstem dash trivia. Right. Mr. So, Marcus is uh, looking now. Yep. Thank you for joining us and playing with us. And um, yeah, do send your scores to us. We will check that tonight. Do we have a preview for the next speaker? Uh, we do not have a preview because I have yet to reconfirm with them. Uh, we do have a next speaker lined up for the end of May, but I've, we've yet to fix a date with them. So there's no preview. So you guys can watch this again, like last time, because this is literally me all the time now. Now what? So we, I will update probably on Monday, whether or not we have, uh, well, whether when we have fixed the dates and time for the speaker. So yeah, but uh, we are hoping to get uh, Melissa Lowe and she might be talking about, uh, I think she said climate change stuff, but we've not fixed the title yet, so yeah. Yep, she works with energy policy in Singapore. So if you're yeah. interested, uh, join the SG STEM uh, group and then you get updates. Yeah. So thanks everyone. Yeah, join the group and uh, probably on Monday we'll let you guys know. But yeah, thank you. You guys have been fantastic. And uh, we will see you guys in a month or so from now. So thank you very much and we'll catch you soon. Thank you everyone.